Okay, so we're going to start with a kind of a review slide here. Um, we're comparing mechanical waves to electromagnetic waves. EMW is electromagnetic waves. Um, note that both carry energy. Um, a lot of people got that wrong on the uh, week one assignment. You know, one important feature of waves to remember is that all types of waves carry energy. They move energy from place to place. Okay, uh, second point on this review chart is that mechanical waves need a medium to travel through where electromagnetic waves can travel through a medium or through empty space. Uh, so let's consider mechanical waves first, like a sound wave. Uh, for a sound wave to work, you have to have something to vibrate. Uh, it can be air, it can be a solid, it can be a gas, but you won't hear any sounds in outer space because there is no medium. There's no air in outer space, okay? uh, so there, there won't be any sounds. On the other hand, electromagnetic waves are perfectly happy to travel through empty space. Uh, obviously, light from the sun gets here to us through empty space. Uh, but remember that electromagnetic waves uh, can travel through media as well. Um, you know, for example, uh, x-rays go through your body, so you can see the bones and other internal structures. Your cell phone uh, works indoors. Uh, you know, our TVs are in our houses, so the radio signals and TV signals from the cell phones and TVs are are going through the walls and going through the windows. So electromagnetic waves can, they can work uh, in the vacuum of space, but they can also go through media. Okay, uh, third point, mechanical waves travel faster in dense mediums, electromagnetic waves travel faster in, in empty space or less dense mediums. Um, I, I think an important point here that a lot of people were missing in the first week lessons is that uh, you know electromagnetic waves are traveling far 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 faster than mechanical waves travel um, we'll talk about this more in subsequent slides but for example sound waves travel roughly 340 350 meters per second uh, light waves on the other hand uh, travel something like three times 10 to the eighth meters per second uh, or maybe something that you can grasp more quickly or more easily. Uh, light wave travels 186,000 miles per second. So there, there's really no comparison in speed. Electromagnetic waves, you know, the speed of light is as fast as anything can go in the universe. Last point on this slide, uh, mechanical waves, uh, you know, they're, it, the point says mechanical waves are caused by change in amplitude. What that means is that there's a disturbance in matter, uh, and the matter, uh, you know, uh, moves or has energy in a wave-like form. Uh, electromagnetic waves are caused because of variation in electrical or magnetic fields. Okay, so uh, let's, let's look at our next slide. Trying to advance it. Okay, our next slide talks a little about a little bit about amplitude. So amplitude is the energy carried by a wave. It is measured from the resting point to the top of the crest or the bottom of the trough. So if you look at these pictures over here, this is a measure of amplitude here, okay, and this is a measure of amplitude here. You can also measure amplitude from the midline to the bottom of the trough uh, over here. Okay, so either way is fine to measure amplitude. Uh, sometimes people measure amplitude from the crest all the way to the trough, but that's not uh, commonly presented in in tenth grade uh, science books. But this is your measure of amplitude right here. This is on a transverse wave, and with transverse waves, uh, greater amplitude means there's more energy. And the way to think about it, if you're at the beach, which kind of wave is going to knock you down? This one right here, this one right here, 
for this one with, with much greater amplitude down here. Okay, so the taller the wave, uh, the more energy it carries. Okay, and we measure it from the crest uh, or trough to the rest point. Now, compressional waves or longitudinal waves, uh, the amplitude relates to how tightly packed the matter is. A loud sound will, uh, if, if you could see the air particles in a sound wave, a loud sound, uh, the air particles in a compression would be tightly packed together and then spaced far apart in the rarefactions. Uh, where a soft sound, the compressions would be less dense uh, and, and not so different from the rarefactions. Okay. Now, uh, this page has some videos. Uh, the Tacoma Narrows Bridge video is not active. Uh, I, I think all these videos are worth taking a look at. Um, they're, they're definitely good. Uh, the Tacoma Narrows Bridge link is inactive, but if you go on YouTube and just type in Tacoma Narrows Bridge, you will see, and, and you will probably recognize it. That's something that I think most people have seen. It's a, a bridge in Washington that uh, collapsed uh, during a windstorm. It's a you know, very striking phenomenon, something you want to take a look at. Uh, the... Um, the Bill Nye link is also inactive, but again, if you go on YouTube, uh, there's various Bill Nye clips on waves that you could watch. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to start with the nature of sound waves. So each sound is produced by an object that vibrates. So whenever you hear a sound, uh, what's happening is that the object is vibrating, uh, which is then causing the air to vibrate, which your ears pick up. So um, I'm seated at a piano now. If I play something, okay, the soundboard in that piano vibrates. Uh, or in this case, it's actually an electronic piano, so the speakers in the piano vibrate. Uh, and then that in turn vibrates the air in the same pattern as the speakers vibrating, and your ears sense that vibration. Uh, sound waves are rhythmic vibrations of a medium. Uh, for example, the rhythmic vibrations of air molecules. The particles uh, colliding produce a wave. Um, the way you want to think about this, uh, you know, all of you have probably thrown a rock into a pond or into a lake. And uh, you've seen that when you throw the rock into the lake, ripples come out from around where the rock hit the water. If you could see the air vibrating, if you could see sound vibrating, whenever something makes a noise, you would see ripples in the air coming out from where that noise is coming from. So. Uh, for example, my voice coming out of the speaker on your computer, uh, if you could see that, you would see ripples in the air coming out from that speaker. Okay, so sound waves are compressional waves and they cannot travel through empty space. Sound needs a medium. Uh, there has to be something there to vibrate. And of course, in, in outer space, there's no, there's no air. Okay, there's nothing to vibrate. So uh, there wouldn't be any sound in space. Now, if you're inside a spacecraft that has air that you can breathe, well, then you'd be able to talk to each other. Uh, but once you're, you know, uh, outside the spacecraft where there is no air, there would be no sound. Now, uh, speed of sound uh, is different in different mediums, and the speed of sound also depends on the temperature. Here's a chart uh, where you can see some of those differences, but let's, let's look at that a little bit more closely on the next slide. Okay, so here's your speed of sound, and the question is, does the speed of sound travel faster in a solid, a liquid, or a gas, and why? Uh, the answer to this, if you look at the chart, uh, first look at these solids, liquids, and gases. Uh, 
the answer to this is, I think, kind of surprises most people. Most people, I think, generally assume that sound would travel faster in the air in a gas than it would be than it would in a solid or a liquid. But that's not correct. If you look at the chart, you can see that sound actually travels much faster uh, in solids like glass and steel. Uh, and it travels also a lot faster in liquids. It actually travels the slowest in the air, you know, roughly 340, 350 meters per second in the air. Um, so why is that? Why does it travel faster in solids and slowest in gases and medium in liquid? Well, that's related to how close the particles are packed together. Remember, what sound is, is those rhythmic vibrations of molecules. And if the particles are packed together closer in a solid, like they are in a solid, uh, the particles hit each other more often, and the sound wave can travel more rapidly. In a gas, the particles are very far apart, uh, so it takes longer for one particle to hit another, and then hit another, and then hit another, and make a wave. So in a solid, the particles are close together. They can hit each other rapidly and make a wave rapidly. In a gas, uh, the particles are far apart, and it takes more time for them to travel to hit another particle and transmit the wave. In a liquid, it's kind of in the middle. OK, uh, and uh, let's see. The other thing that this chart shows is how temperature affects it. And I think you can probably understand and, and guess what happens there. The higher the temperature, uh, the faster the sound is going to uh, travel. Um, and you know, we've already learned about in our uh, thermal energy unit that what temperature really is is measuring how fast the particles are moving. Uh, and it kind of makes sense that faster moving particles, and what sound is, is these particles running into each other and making a wave. Well, the faster those particles are moving to begin with, the faster the sound is going to travel. So uh, sound travels a little bit faster at high temperature air than it does at uh, low temperature air. And you can see on the chart at, at 20 degrees Celsius, which is roughly room temperature, Air tra uh, sound travels in air roughly 343 meters per second. Uh, if uh, on a cold day outside, it would travel about you know, 12 or 13 meters per second slower. 